my motion graphics. Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another my motion graphics tutorial. My name is Gustav Maia, and today I'm gonna show you how to make this cluster effect. Now, I made this video when I was trying out the Illuminati, and if you don't know what it is, I suggest you go into myemotiongraphics.tv and go and check it out. It's in the download section, and it's basically an illumination setup, okay? It will give you great results, fast renders, and it's uh, very useful. Uh, but I'm not gonna waste too much time on the Illuminati right now, I'm just going to show you how to make this effect. Now this effect is nothing new, and if you're thinking, yeah it's an attractor, yeah it is an attractor, but it has some more stuff, and during this video I'm gonna talk about some other stuff, um, not specifically related to the attractor, but some dynamics as well. And who knows, you'll learn something out of it if you already know how to work with the, the attractor. If you don't, well, I guess this tutorial is made just for you. So, uh, in the end, we won't get uh, the same exact result, but the principles will be the same, okay? I, I'll try not to worry that much about the look and the colors and all that stuff. I'll try not to focus that much on that particular part. I'll try instead to explain you how to make this effect and uh, explain you a little bit more about dynamics in Cinema 4D. So I hope you're ready, let's stop with the chip chat and let's get started. Okay so here we are inside Cinema 4D, I'm using R15 and also using a Mac and first things first let's uh, start by editing our render settings and preparing our project. Um, I want a full HD, so 1920 by 1080, full HD like a boss. And I'm gonna lock ratio, very useful usually. Um, I'm leaving frame range for now to current frame, I'll change that later on. Uh, uncheck save, go into anti-aliasing and uh, from geometry go to best and filter let's go for gauss good for animation and that's it for now let's close this and let's um before getting started as well increase the length of our animation to something around 600 frames okay probably too much but you know uh, who cares? And we'll start by creating a sphere and change the display type from gorge shading to something that has lines. Uh, doesn't really matter right now. So gorge shading lines will be okay. And I wanted I wanted to see the lines because there are more segments that I need. So I just decrease this value and 12. 12 it looks uh, and it will work and if I press render over here the sphere will actually be spherical be rounded and that's because of our render perfect is checked on if I uncheck this and render it again then you see this uh, low poly edges over here but we don't want that so make sure to check or leave this as it was and you'll get a decent sphere with a small amount of segments and the less segments you have the easier it will be for you to um, for the software and for your machine to calculate the dynamics that we're gonna um, be working later on right so uh, be sure that you have that in mind now let's create a cube and let's resize the cube to something like 50 by 50 by 50 and I forgot to resize the sphere, so let's change the radius of the sphere to something like 25. So it kind of has a little bit the same uh, same size. And let's uh, create, let's create what? Let's create a pyramid. And again, change the size to 50 by 50 by 50. And, and this is okay. I'm going to stick with this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create copies of this object. So I want to have four 
sorry, four pyramids, four cubes, and four spheres. Um, this is like a, a fast way to create um, clones that have different colors. There are other ways, but this is probably the simplest and the easiest one. Uh, okay, so now let's create our materials. So double click on here and now that we have one material let's rename this to um, let's call it one and the basic color I would leave I think I'll leave it right there but I'll change the specular and I want to reduce the specular a bit like so so it kinda has this uh, soft uh, like glowing specular but really uh, soft not very glowing actually really soft uh, you can barely see it actually but it's there you know if I check it and uncheck it I can see that it's there but it's really soft and who knows probably I'll change that later okay now that we have or all of our objects let's create a cloner let's create the cloner and bring every single object inside the cloner right now we have um, this over here don't really uh, not really what we want but no problem let's go into linear make sure you have your cloner selected and change uh, the mode from linear to grid array array and let's change the number of the clones so from three let's go I don't know maybe seven by seven by seven and let's increase the size of our cloner until all of the objects um, kind of have this spacing between them so they don't overlap basically and this seems to be enough okay and um, oh I forgot about the materials just create one or oh, silly of me so we have one material, let's just make uh, some three more materials, okay? So just click and drag with your uh, command pressed or control if you're in the Windows. And let's rename these to two and edit this material over here. Let's edit this material um, by going into color and picking another one. I'm going to start with pink. Uh, I'm not feeling that manly today, so... Um, that was a joke, of course. Okay, pink, and notice that I'm not going over here. Uh, this is way too saturated, and I want this pastel. Not sure if this is the way to pronounce it, but anyway, I think you get the idea. Some sh uh, soft colors, kind of bright, soft colors, not very intense. And all right, I have one, two. Let's create another one. Let's create our third color. Let's go for blue, blue for the boys, so nobody gets mad. And let's create another one and call it uh, four. And let's pick some other color, so I'm not sure. I'll just say maybe green. Who knows, green. Green looks good for now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'll bring each of the colors, the materials, to each of um, each copy of a single object. So we have four pyramids with four different colors, and four cubes with four different colors, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, instead of going from here to there, from the materials to over here, I can actually just duplicate the tags, the color tags, the material tags over here by clicking and dragging with the command key or the uh, the control key in the windows but be, be careful because this might happen okay so make sure you only have what you are copying selected like for instance I'm copying the green so I have only the green selected and now I select the white and then I'll make the copy then I'll select the pink and then I'll make the copy and so on and so forth and voila we have clones with a bunch of colors yay looking good
All right, now let's make these clones fall. So let's go into tags, Cinema 4D tags, or sorry, uh, where is it? Simulation tags, rigid body. <coughs> okay, rigid body, let's press play and see if something is happening. Yes, we have some gravity, that's good news. And let's bring this a little bit upper. So I'm uh, I'm moving my cloner upwards, all right? And don't move your objects inside. Won't really make any difference. Just bring your clone, your cloner, a little bit upwards. And now we have objects that fall. Not very interesting, I guess, but it's something. And what I'm about to do now is I'm creating um, I would say uh, a random effector to to make the objects uh, kind of not have the same size you know to make some a little bit more um, interest to give a little bit more interest to our scene so with the cloner selected create click random and the random what's doing now is it's actually moving the objects in the position value only so it's moving the objects 50 centimeters in the x 50 on the y and 50 on the z uh, and this is these are the maximum values and he's like making this uh, randomness between these values but we don't want this we actually just want the scale we want an uniform scale and we'll just increase this a bit like so we'll just tweak it a little bit like so and this will look okay let's press play again good now we we need to have a collider body so let's create our object that's going to collide now um, I've seen a lot of people doing this um, for this effect is they create a sphere which is not wrong you can obviously create whatever you want but for this particular effect I'm going to use a pyramid and I'm going to tell you why because the pyramid has the sides this um, this more sharpened edges over here and there and it will help us to drag all of these objects around as it moves and rotates and scales so if I have a sphere and the sphere rotates it's basically the same that uh, than doing nothing um, but that's it anyway we have a pyramid I'm changing the size to I'm not sure but 100 by 100 by 100 uh, maybe a little bit more but I'll just scale it up over here it's way easier this way and let's press play see what happens nothing happens so far obviously before I forget let's bring the material over here to our pyramid I'm not sure if I want to see this pyramid in the end but anyway we have a material if we forget and uh, sorry about this render I wasn't supposed to do it but whatever now we can see that the, the, the clones are falling but they don't touch they don't even interact with this pyramid and that's because we need to add another tag like this one not exactly like this one but very similar let's select pyramid go into tags and search for uh, simulation tags and instead of rigid body let's go and create a collider body okay it's working pretty cool right I know it sucks um, and this is because our cloner is acting as one single object so dynamics are ignoring all of these objects inside the cloner and they are treating the cloner object as one single object and that's by far what we want so we need to tweak a little bit the dynamics of this object and so select the cloner go into the dynamics tag and somewhere where it says individual elements set it to top level and now let's see what happens great something is happening and this already looks really cool right I can actually I could actually make a snapshot of this out of this and make it like a really cool wallpaper and give it as a gift to my mother 
or my mother-in-law or if it looked like crap I could give it to something or to someone that I hate not sure anyway um, things are going great so far but the objects are actually falling and I want them to stick over here and to do that I will actually need another thing that I can find over here in the simulate uh, where is it? Is 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 uh, earth particles? That's it. Particles attractor. Sorry, I kind of got a blank somewhere. Anyway, here we have our tractor, and let's press play, and we can barely see any result, and it's because our strength is way low, and we need to increase this a lot, like. It's by 10, it was at 10, I'm going to try 10,000. Let's check how it looks. Now, great. It looks good, but you can see that there are these pieces that kind of spit once in a while. And we can change that, we can really change that by just setting our speed limit. Instead of, I'm not sure what's in here, 200,000? Let's try 200 and press play again and better way better right but you can see that some of our uh, clones kind of fall and that's because the strength is probably not enough so let's increase the strength from 10,000 to 50,000 like a champ and let's press play and stuff is going really good right Perfect. Okay, bring it to the top. And now what we need to do um, is to move this pyramid around. Now make sure that you have your attractor inside the pyramid. Because right now if I move the pyramid around, the attractor will follow, right? Here's the, attract the attractor over here. And as you can see, it follows the, the, the position of the pyramid and that's really really important so let me just undo this all right and we're going to create a tag and put it in here in our pyramid and this tag will actually make the pyramid move around rotate and scale randomly without adding a, sin a single keyframe and that's really cool and it saves a lot of uh, work so a lot of time so go into tags, make sure you have your pyramid selected, go into tags and look for Cinema 4D tags, vibrate, okay? Once you have your vibrate, nothing really happens. And let me just uncheck the cloner for a minute. Nothing really happens, okay? So I'm pressing play and nothing's, nothing's new. No problem, we actually need to make some adjustments to this tag. We need to enable position and let's press play okay so now our pyramid is moving in the x direction in the x axis in an amplitude of a hundred centimeters maximum um, with a frequency of two and this is basically the speed so the higher the, vo the value the faster it will actually go now obviously this is too fast so i just undo it Enable position again and go for, I don't know, maybe 200 by 200 by 200 and reduce the frequency to maybe 1. I'm not really sure. Uh, I guess we'll try it that way. And let's enable scale as well. And make sure uniform scale is on. It's not really important. You can actually make like so. Actually, it will probably look interesting this way. But let's check uniform scale and um, probably probably the frequency is too high so let's just, just decrease it, that a little bit and enable rotation now 30 degrees it's too low, too low so let's increase this value to 360 and 360 this is a lot 360 360 360 and decrease the frequency this uh, to one maybe 0.5 okay 
And now, back to the top, now we can try again. Press play and see how it works. Great. And now is the time that we will probably want to change some stuff, like maybe the size of the pyramid is too big, or maybe the, the pyramid may not appear in our render, so we may want to hide from the render our pyramid, but first of all, I'm going to change the size, just decrease it a little bit, like so. I'm not actually sure what I did, but probably will work. And there you go, maybe increase the strength of our tractor. So go into a tractor and from 50,000 let's go to 60,000. Push it backwards. And maybe our speed limit is set to this value because it's, it's uh, slightly smaller than what we chose because we actually scaled the pyramid down and therefore this value also changed because our tractor is inside the pyramid anyway let's go to 200 once again and uh, maybe the pyramid is moving way too fast so go back into um, the vibrate expression or vibrate tag and probably reduce the rotation to frequency to from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 and the position um, the position to maybe 0.5 I'm not really sure okay lots of stuff happening lots of stuff maybe reduce the rotation uh, to 0.25 and increase the position to 0.8 and i'm just guessing you know just change the values and see what's happening see if you like uh, maybe increase even further the strength of our tractor to from 60,000 to 80,000 and bring this way back okay and check how it looks Okay, not bad. I'll probably just change one or two things. I want the position to be bigger, um, longer. I, I, I mean, so 400 by 400 by 400. And let me just check if this, uh, this went good. So sorry vibrate not 40 but 400 yeah and reduce the frequency to point five I'm not sure from the top and now we have something cool going on and this is pretty cool I think uh, and you know this kind of stuff is actually changing values and just trying out for yourself but it's important to understand that the vibrate tag will determine the, the the position of this pyramid okay so the position the rotation then the scale and how far does it go and how fast does it go and all that stuff and the attractor it's mainly the force that's bringing all of these objects closer to the to the, the pyramid so really need to try out and this speed limit is basically something that limits the speed of the objects right so if they're moving too slow and if you want them to this looks good this looks good this looks even better than the first version I did I think I'm gonna live it this way now, uh, one thing I want to do, I actually don't like to see the pyramid running around. I want to make it look like magic, you know, there's no object that's kind of, you know, attracting everything. So let's uh, hide our pyramid from the viewports and from our render so you don't have anything. Great. 
Running good. This is looking good. A little bit awkward, I guess. All right. Now, some other stuff. What can we do to improve this? Now, I don't want our animation to start from this, like objects falling from the sky, right? It reminds me of a movie where a bottle of Coke fell from the sky. There was this guy down there that you know found the bottle or it, it was hit in the head with the bottle and then he thought it was the gods. What's the name of the movie? Gods must be crazy or something like that. Anyway, I don't want this. So I'm going to choose the very first frame that I want for my animation. And this would be something like this. The 41st frame looks good. I want to start my animation from here. So we're going into our dynamics body. And where it says set initial state, and this is under dynamics. So dynamics set initial state. Let's click on that. And once we go back into our first frame, we now start our animation from here. And now let's press play. And there you have it. Let's take a look at it for a little bit longer. And stuff is working good. Looking good. I could actually have some more objects flying around. Yeah. Maybe so, but it looks good for now. For now, okay. Um, some other stuff. Um, I like the animation. I like everything. I want to make the animation, um, the dynamics. I want to cache them. And what does this mean? It means that I can record all of this animation, all of this movement, uh, into somewhere in my um, hard drive. And this means that the software won't need to calculate every single, every single thing, every single position, every time I press play. Uh, which means basically that it will work faster, right? So if I'm happy with the animation, I can just make like a, like a print on paper, right? Um, because if you see, I can scroll this backwards and in, to the front and it kind of gives us this weird effect because he has to calculate the dynamics, right? And for that, I need to come over here to the dynamics tag again, go into cache and bake object, okay? Now, one little thing before I do this. There might be times where some objects overlap with some other objects, and that can be fixed. If you have this issue, that can be fixed. Click Command D or Control D if you're, in, you're, if you're in Windows, and you'll get the project settings. Okay, go into Dynamics. Inside Dynamics, you have several tags, four of them, I guess. Go into Experts and increase the steps per frame. I'm going to increase this from five to fifteen. Okay, um, don't um, pick a huge number over here. Uh, if you don't have to, if, if objects don't overlap, and if you enjoy the, you know the, the the final outcome, just don't move that. Um, this will make our animation um, move slower, and in the final render, actually, it will look the same in terms of speed, but the calculations will be better. Okay, it will take longer to calculate because it's more precise and precise is a little bit I guess it's the right word or the right yeah the right expression for it um, and I'm going to I'm going to do this right now just before I cache just before I record all of this animation um, because again it slows the process a little bit and therefore I just want to make that way before I bake the object so let's bake object Hope that it works. There's this bar, it will grow and we'll wait a second. Probably won't take more than 30 seconds. I think I'll just fast forward this. Okay, so it is baked. Okay. Uh, one thing I notice is that our first frame kind of disappears. I'm not really sure why. 
Um, there are other ways of baking objects and baking these uh, solutions, but actually um, I'm going to stick with this and it's okay if our first frame is empty, no problem. We just render it from our first frame on, no problem at all. And now you can see that I can scrub my timeline back and forth and um, I have no issue of you know getting stuck somewhere because it's not calculating um, continuously so every single animation that's in here it's already recorded somewhere uh, okay great now what can I do over here to make this look better let's create a camera so let's go into target cam target camera all right and I'm gonna rename this camera to something um, a little bit more uh, obvious like John and the camera target to John target right this is pretty obvious and let's go ahead and pick our four views and on the top left corner I want to use the camera and use John and John is the guy that's actually shooting the scene, right? He's the cameraman, so I want to see what John is actually seeing. And that's why I chose John for this job, you know, because John is a good guy. Um, Alright, now let's, on our top view, move John around and try to pick a good spot for him to shoot. You know, can't be too close because John can be hit with some of these cubes and he might get injured and we don't want that poor guy so probably here it will be enough let's press play and let's he's a little bit closer I guess closer than he should might be risky yeah let's bring John a little bit farther away just a little bit like so and press play and just check how this is going pretty awkward but I kinda like the result although there's a lot of empty space on the top over here and to correct that I'm gonna move John and John target a little bit lower like so and let's press play once again uh, make sure you click on the view that you actually want to render or actually want to see the animation and this looks gorgeous I don't know about yourself but I really like this it was really not um, what I was going for in the beginning exactly but I kinda like this I'm, I'm gonna stick with this right kinda has this tail around it and it looks good it looks really good I like that a lot I like this a lot Alright, now let's make a quick render out of this, and here's my picture viewer on my other screen, and this will probably look really awkward. Right, great, looks terrible, let's just shrink this down to 50%. And this is a full HD, but you know, it has no lights, so it renders really fast on my machine. And I'm running the laptop, so 6 seconds, or maybe less than that, I'm not sure. 6 seconds, yeah. It looks less than that. Anyway, it looks terrible. Let's create some lighting. Okay, let's light the objects. And I'm going to use the Illuminati for this purpose. Now, I hope that you have installed the Illuminati already. If you didn't, just pause the video, go to mymotiongraphics.tv, go into download section, and you'll find the Illuminati there. Make sure you install the Illuminati. You'll have some information uh, right next to the file. And obviously, before you do everything, 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 uh, before you do, before you actually download, make sure you leave a small donation. Um, you know, I have ten kids, and you know they they are not going to school because I'm making tutorials for free and plugins and tools and all that stuff. And you know, they asked one of them. Dad, can I have um? Can I have can I have a soda? I said no. That's wrong. You can't drink that. And he asked, "What? Why?" And I told him, "You know, I don't have the money." And he said, "Yeah, but he smokes cigarettes." 
And I told him, yeah, but that's important. And he said, why? And whatever. Anyway, I, I hope you get the point. So uh, please be friendly. I hope you are. I'm sure you are friendly. Make a donation and install the Illuminati and you'll find it over here in presets, under presets, presets over here. You'll find the folder called MMG the Illuminati. Just double click on that and drag it into our scene. All right, great. Um, let's go over here, objects, and get a little bit of space, a little bit of room. Yeah, that's it. And let's just make a quick render out of this. And it looks fairly good, I guess. But we can change some stuff, so select Illuminati. And let's change this viewport over here to go into cameras, use camera. Not John, default camera is good, so forget about use camera, go into perspective, that's what I want. And change the display to something like gorgeating lines. Now I'm sorry if I'm going too fast, but you know, you can always pause the video, push this um, a little bit backwards and watch it again. So sorry if I'm going too fast. Uh, all right, now I'm going over here in this uh, viewport because I want to run around and don't touch my camera, right? And what I want to do is to scale it a little bit, this Illuminati. So make sure you select the Illuminati, go into the Illuminati tab and just bring this over here so we have a little bit more room. And what we want probably to scale a little bit our uh, Illuminati maybe bring it a little bit down and just make a quick render over here see how it looks not bad not bad at all over here let's see how it looks from our from John <laughs> say John how's it going oh by the way if you if you're called John uh, leave a comment that would be fun leave a comment and say something like hey I'm John um, that would be cool. All right, so now um, stuff that we can change in the Illuminati to make this look a little bit better or a little bit different. I don't want to spend too much time working on with uh, with Illuminati, but you have a tutorial on that in my motion graphics TV. You'll find a tutorial there there. But we can decrease a little bit the outer angle and the inner angle just a tiny bit, and our image will be will get. A little bit darker and you can also increase the complexity like so and now it will be brighter therefore we'll need to reduce the intensity so that's the way you work with it so a little bit of this a little less of that and that's the way we do it decrease a little bit the intensity Render again. By the way, the Illuminati doesn't work with the interactive render region. If you think something's wrong with your machine, it's not. It's actually the software itself. The, the Illuminati doesn't work with the interactive render region. Okay? But you can render it like this. It still renders pretty fast and I think it's still good. Okay. Pretty awesome. Let's create a background. It's kind of hard to understand our viewports without a background, right? It's kind of hard to understand what's going on. So let's create another material. Let's call it BG, just because I like staying alive. Uh, it's kind of better than being dead, I guess. And go over into floor and pick background, all right. Uh, let's bring the backgrounds over the background or the BGs go to the background, whatever, and let's edit this material. So this is the material for our backgrounds. Inside color, let's pick gradient in our texture. So go to texture, gradient, and gradient. Okay, now we can see how this is looking, and it will look pretty awful. Pretty, pretty awful. But we can change some stuff. Like, I'm not really sure I'm going to try it out. Let's go from 2D U to 2D V. And now we have a vertical gradient from dark to bright. And 
obviously I want I want uh, I don't want this color so let's just change a little bit this I'm going to pick something I'm not really sure but try to be creative you know try to create your own stuff I mean try to gather knowledge and then recreate something that looks cool or better than this now I'll try not to spend too much time on details over here I think most of our effect is already accomplished and that was the purpose of this tutorial but anyway I don't like to leave things unfinished so this looks not that bad at all and yeah, let's just press play and try to look um, for another frame like so and oh my god we could do so many things with this add some depth of field and some motion blur and I don't know what more and some specular bloom and this and that but you know that would probably be a huge tutorial so maybe next time just tweaking this and that and again this will be a good timing for you to to adjust stuff like adjust a little bit the colors adjust a little bit the maybe the movement is already good but if you didn't like it you could change it right now right now and if i was uh if i was not making a tutorial i'll probably waste um or invest more time just to get stuff right even the illuminati could be changed a little bit it could be you know this color over here could be a little bit brighter and this uh, dark red brownish color could be some other color and we could try that but again i'll leave all of those decisions to you so i guess that's it if you enjoyed this video make sure to click the like button share it subscribe if you haven't already keep those comments flowing and all that good stuff my name is Gustav Maya for mymotiongraphics.tv i'll see you in another video until then bye bye